Good morning again. It is good to be with you. This morning before I left my uh, house, I grabbed a sermon illustration out of my garage on the way. I want to show it to you. It is my trusty, very old, and I'll tell the kids, kids, this is really, really old, like 60 years old, which is like as old as anything could possibly be, right? Super old. <laughs> this is a uh, Stanley number no. 7. It's a joiner plane. I was once upon a time uh, someone who fancied himself a furniture maker and uh, <laughs> a carpenter. Not so much anymore. So that's been sitting in my garage for a little while. Uh, it's a good sermon illustration. We'll get to the why later on, but I just want you to be able to see, hopefully you can see it from there, how disgusting it looks, how covered in rust, how kind of flaky and gross uh, the coating is on it. And you can probably imagine that if I were to take this thing apart and show you all the pieces on the inside, how rusty and pitted and kind of gross these things are as well, right? This is the plain iron. It's not in great shape at all. It's not in great shape at all because I haven't used it in years. When you're using it every day, there is kind of a ritual that comes on. You start to get a sense of every time you scrape it down the wood and it peels off another little sliver or uh, a ribbon of wood, you get a sense of how well it's cutting. You can even see the little variations in the ribbon that comes off and tell if there's a new pit growing in the blade because that piece will be just a little bit thicker than the rest of it around. It'll look like a little ridge. So you'll take it back and you'll hone it again and hone it again and hone it again. At the end of every session, I would take uh, wax and wax the entire thing down. Make sure it was well protected. After a couple of years of not doing that, uh, it's not well protected. We live in a humid environment with some salt in the air, it's not good for this thing. It has taken a beating. It can get back in shape, but right now it's in a pretty rough spot. This uh, tool is a wonderful tool if taken care of. It's a wonderful tool and one of my most useful tools when I'm using it a lot. Left alone and without the protection it needs, left without use and practice, it's pretty useless. It's a paperweight. I bring this up because Jesus has indicated in the gospel today our effective tool for ministry. He's sent his disciples out, not just the disciples that we know, the 12 named disciples, but another group of 70 uh, out to do ministry. If you remember from those of you who were here the last couple weeks, Jesus has had this experience that set himself toward Jerusalem. He's going to ultimately go to Jerusalem to face uh, death and persecution. And on his way there, he's decided that he's going to send people ahead of him to stop into all these towns along the way, to tell people that the kingdom of God has come near, is coming near, that Jesus himself is in this procession going toward Jerusalem. And <clears throat> They are all supposed to go and share some of the stories and allow for Jesus to enter into that place and do ministry there. The ministry that he's already established that he will be doing all the way back in chapter 4. We're in chapter 10 now. So back in chapter 4, he said he was going to heal and cast out demons. He was going to free the prisoner and give comfort to the oppressed. He was going to give sight to the blind and so on and so forth. And he's been doing it already. He wants to do it more and more on his way to Jerusalem. So he sends 12 out. They go. They come back. They go. They come back. Now he's sent 70 more. They go off in pairs to all these towns along the way. And he gives them specific instructions that you just heard, right? Here are the ones that I want you to focus on today. Don't take anything with you. No purse. Don't take two tunics. Don't take extra sandals. Don't take a money bag. Don't take any staff. Don't take anything with you at all. Rely on the hospitality of the strangers you're going to meet and rely on it so much that when you get there, you just like, stay put. Don't try to work your way up the social ladder of whatever small town uh, you've entered into. Just stay put. Eat what they put in front of you. Be gracious to the hosts that are being gracious to you and do the work of the kingdom. And he tells them, don't take anything with you, but you have something to give. So when you get to this place, when you go into a house, put your peace out into this house. 
If they receive it, it'll land on them. If they don't, it'll return to you. Let it return to you. As you go into a town, if they reject you, no sweat. We don't have time to worry about it. Just let that peace come back to you and keep on moving for the sake of the kingdom. We've only got a couple months to go before the crucifixion. As we've noted the last couple weeks, Jesus doesn't have time to fool around with all the extra stuff. He's got a mission. So just step out of the town, wipe the dust off your feet, and keep moving, which is for sure, um, well, it's kind of the Middle Eastern equivalent of a middle finger. It's not an altogether pleasant uh, thing to wipe the dust off your feet in that way, but there's another way of saying we're just not going to let this stick to us, right? We're moving on. So what I want you to see, and I think this is, uh, for me, one of the most important things to recognize right now in this text. We get this text a lot from all the different Gospels. But what I want you to see is that Jesus has stripped them of all the stuff that they might think they need for ministry and has lifted out of all that stuff the one thing that they will have to give, peace. It's their tool. It's what they come to share. It's what they offer to the house that they're in. It's what they offer to the town they're in. It's almost synonymous with the very kingdom of heaven in this text. It's peace that they know that Jesus says that he gives that the world cannot give, that he gives that's beyond understanding. If we were to translate it directly from the Hebrew word that Jesus most likely was referencing, shalom, it's way more than some feeling. It's not a sentiment. This is a status in the universe of wholeness and wellness that goes beyond the emotional, beyond the physical, beyond the spiritual, and instead holds all of that together in a way that is greater than the sum of its parts. This peace that Jesus gives them is what they have to offer and it has to be protected. It's their tool, but like any tool, if it's not used, if it's not protected, if it's not honed, if it's not practiced, if it just gets placed on a shelf, it gets rusted and dulled. There are a lot of corrosive things in the air that have caused this thing to fall apart. There are a lot of corrosive things in our world that can damage our sense of peace. There are corrosive things in our relationships that we allow to stay there. There are corrosive things in our society that we allow to stay there. There are corrosive things in the church. Corrosive things all over the place. So much of the success of the gospel, maybe all of the success of the gospel, is in a partnership with these Ordinary human beings that are going to go and share peace. But Jesus is coming to do the real work, right? The disciples can't eliminate the corrosiveness. On their own, there's no way they can go into a town and force them to receive peace or joy or to receive the kingdom of heaven. They can't do it. All they can do is share. There's nothing we can do to eliminate the salt floating in off the beach. There's nothing we can do to change the humidity levels in Florida. I know some of y'all have been praying about that for a long time. I hate to disappoint you. Our tool, our peace, will likely always be subject to the forces in the world that want to corrode them. You've probably experienced before what it's like to be in a relationship or um, be in a group of people where when you put your peace out, it gets utterly rejected. Or a group of people whose uh, value system or uh, expression of their values is so different than yours that it feels like they are constantly corroding that sense of peace that you have. Y'all been there before? Right? Didn't even have to look up on that one. <laughs> you know what that's like. So often we catch ourselves in the habit of praying for God to, like, change those people, right? Please change those people. Please fix them. Please give me the strength and the patience that I need to keep on trying to fix them, so on and so forth. 
Imagine where the disciples would have been, these 70 who were sent out, if that was their perspective. If every town they stopped along the way and they just simply said, all right, buckle up, we're going to stay here until we fix all these people and get it ready for Jesus. Jesus tells them that they can't possibly do that, but instead, to protect that sense of peace that Jesus has given them for the sake of preparing the way to those who will receive the good news of the kingdom of heaven. So if your peace does not land in this place, it's okay. The kingdom of heaven has still come near. Draw the peace back and move along. You'll never be able to fix all of the problems in the world. We'll never be able to remove all of the corrosive things. But you do have a job to do. That is to share the peace that Christ has given you. To use it. To make it known. To take risks with it by putting it out in places where it might not be known. Treat it as a gift worth sharing. And like any tool that is useful for the kingdom of heaven, the key, I think, to using it well is to use it and to use it and to use it again. To create additional opportunities to keep it in use in such a way that you harness your ability to protect it shape it, to hone it, all for the sake of sharing it with others. Don't let your peace be on a shelf. Don't let your peace become vulnerable to the corrosive forces in this world. Look for an opportunity today to share your peace with others. If it doesn't work, it's okay. Let Jesus do his work. Your only mission ever was or ever will be to offer the gift of peace to another. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.